Through Givelify, you can sow a seed. Just download the free Simple and Secure Givelify app on any Apple or Android device and type Red Oak Grove Holiness Church as place of worship. Then tap Give to sow your seed. While on our giving page, you will have the option to create a profile, which will give you the ability to log in at any time to view your prior online donations or to make changes to any recurring gifts you may have scheduled. Like us on Facebook.com 2013 Red Oak Grove Church and don't forget to subscribe to our new YouTube page by searching for Red Oak Grove C-O-L-G. Thank you and be blessed. Give today with Givelify. Welcome to Red Oak Grove Church of the Living God online broadcast, where Elder Adrian Ivey is pastor. We are located at 287 County Road 154 in Shannon, Mississippi. We pray that your heart is uplifted and your mind is renewed as you listen to the Word of God. Let us now tune in to the service already in progress. Father, we come before you now to say thank you. Thank you because you are our God. And beside you, there is no Savior. And every praise is to our God. Lord, at this hour, we come before you now to just thank you out of a heart of love and joy. Because we know there's nobody that can do the thing that you do, God. There's nobody like you, God. Nobody that can wrap us in, a, in your hand like you do, God, to put a hedge of protection around us and love us as much as you do. And today we like to say, we like to say thank you. We know it wasn't because we are so good, but because you are so gracious and so loving and so merciful, God, we say thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you do and what you are doing. We ask you now, God, to speak to our heart and speak to our mind. Speak to every avenue of our understanding, God, that we would hear from you. That we would leave this place different from when we came. That you would plant a seed in our mind and in our spirit, God. That our life would be transformed by the power of your word, God. That you would speak to us in a manner and in a way, God, that we know it was from you. We want you to have your way. Move me and bring yourself that people would hear you in their situation, in their circumstance, God. That you would be lifted up. Said in your word, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto myself, God. And we want people to see you. So we ask you to speak now. For you know the hearts of your people. You know the burdens that they bear, God. So we ask you to meet that need and have your way. We say thank you now. In Jesus' name we do pray. Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15, beginning at verse 21. God is just a good God. Sometimes we really can't explain it. And we just say he's just good. Matthew chapter 15. Beginning at verse 21. Matthew chapter 15, beginning at verse 21. And it reads, Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Cana came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her, not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I'm not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Yeah. 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 
But he answered and said, it is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. You may be seated in the house of God. We honor God because he is God. Beside him there is no other. We honor all the ministers of the house. God bless you to all the deacons, to all the ushers, to all the saints, visitors, everybody in the house. We greet you in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To all of you who are listening online, we thank you. We are praying for you, and we appreciate you for tuning in to us once again. I want to dig off into this thing and read a few scriptures once again off into your hearing to try to uh, formulate or create some kind of tension off into your mind. Y'all with me? Yeah. I want to read this thing one more time. Yeah. And I want you to put yourself in the Canaanite woman's position. Yeah. I'm not going to read it all, but I, 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 I'm, I want to read it. I want to read it. And behold, a woman of Canaanite came out of the same coast and cried unto him, Have mercy on me, O Lord. Thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. She had an issue. She had a problem. She had a deep concern. But he answered her, not a word. His disciples came and told Jesus, send her away. She cried after us. Notice Jesus answered and said to this woman, I'm not sent unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she said and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. This is the part that gets me. But he answered and said, it is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. If that were us speaking to someone and others were around and we had a deep desire or concern and we heard the words, I will take your religious mindset, your pre preconceived notions out of the way for a moment. But if you were sitting there having a deep concern issue going on and you needed some help and you were standing around a group of folk and you went to one person directly and you cried out to them for help and they don't say a word. And then you have the naysayers that's standing around say to him, sin, put yourself in that position, away. And then when he speaks, he says, I'm not here for you. And it's you who he's talking to. And then he speaks again. And notice the words that he says, it is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Question is, how do you feel when you hear those words? How do you really feel when you hear that? I know some of y'all trying to be overly religious and thinking to yourself, I don't, you know, I wouldn't even let that bother me. Whew. How would you really feel? May I suggest to you, you would be highly 
offended at the statement that was made. You, you'd be highly offended if, if, if you were there and you had a deep concern, you was really emotional, and you had a, a, a this woman's daughter was grievously vexed by a devil. Just put yourself in that situation, and when somebody, you're going to somebody for some kind of help, and you hear the words, I, I, what I got for you is not meant for you. Matter of fact, I can't give it to you. It's not for the dogs. If I could this morning just for a little while speak from this thought or this subject, let it go. There's a miracle behind the madness. Let it go. There is a miracle behind the madness. Because the truth of the matter is, if I were in that predicament or that situation, y'all might as well lay down, Pastor A. Brother A, I would be downright mad if I were in a circle of folk needing some kind of help and somebody say, this ain't for you, dog. I would be highly offended. I would be downright I'll be mad hearing these type of words, especially in a vulnerable position. In a situation like that, I mean, you know, when you're hearing something like that, you need some kind of, of, of help. I would be offended. Wonder how we really deal with an offense. Hmm. How do you really deal with being offended? I guess in my spirit, I was thinking about this week of the young lady, the kids out there fighting. I got two girls and one son. I don't know if that's where this come from. I don't know if it come from my spirit of the Holy Spirit, but I'm going to give it to you just like I believe God gave it to me. I was thinking about those kids fighting, and before the action of the officer, I wonder what went on in the situation that caused all of that to go on. Uh, and, 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 and in my spirit, I couldn't believe somebody was offended. I'm trying to deal with us because some of us Some of us know what it's like to be offended because of some kind of offense. Yeah, we're living in, in the United States of America, and, and, and I know we, as, as, as one man say, we, we're trying to be uh, politically correct in everything we say and we, we do, but, but at the same time, we are, are, are living in a world that is constantly uh, uh, being offensive. Hmm. And somehow, some way, you know, we wish we live in a world well, we ain't really have to deal with this issue or this matter. I mean, I mean that, 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 that's the mindset that we oftentimes have. I should not have to deal with offenses. Uh, Y'all know, okay, let me get them. I, I, I shouldn't have to deal with offenses. We in the church just deal with that just for a moment. I'm going to know, you know, hold me, Lord, because I don't want to get ahead of myself. Because in the church, we have the mindset that we, we, we shouldn't have to deal with offenses in the church. But, but, but can I suggest to you that uh, uh, the Lord taught us that offenses will They're going to come. 
uh, you know, they, 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 they're, they're going to they're gonna come. So uh, if they're going to come, and we know that they're going to come, why do we think that they're not? Take it another way. Why do we operate as if they are not going to come? Hmm, because a lot of times we, we operate in that way. We operate in a position to where we think to ourselves they are not going to. They're not going to come. Or, or, or offenses, 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 offenses. Can I suggest to you um, an offense and being offended are two different things. I, 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 I mean, I mean uh, an offense is what happened to you. It's an, uh, uh, an uh, uh, event that happened to you. This woman was in a position to where she came to Jesus seeking help. And he spoke words that uh, potentially was offensive to the woman. But may I suggest to us how she took that uh, 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 offense she had something to do about it. Hold on, let me let me let me go this way. Let me let me go this this way. Uh, an offense uh, you don't have control over, but being offended is a choice. That hurt. <laughs> and that touched my feeling. <laughs> That touches my feeling, preacher, because <laughs> you trying to tell me <laughs> I have a part to play in being offended? I don't really want to hear that. Uh, don't turn me off just yet because we're living in a, a culture where we are constantly uh, uh, having offenses done to us and we find ourselves being offended by um, the offense. But the question I have for us, what choice will we make? What choice will we make? Because one thing about being offended, it is a meter of how mature I am. <laughs> I know I'm going to get myself in a little trouble, but, but it's going to be all right. I know sometimes we think because we have been here a long time, and we say to ourselves, I've grown uh, 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 in the Lord and I'm, I'm, I'm here and, and I'm on another level and, 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 and I'm going higher in the Lord. And we make the proclamation out our mouth. But uh, the last time you were uh, had an offense done to you, how did you respond to the offense? May I suggest to you that God has some great things for you. God has, has, has some, uh, some things that um, um, uh, um, uh, I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things that the Lord has for you. But, 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 but can I say this to you? Uh, what if it is on the other side of the madness. What, what if it's on the other side of the offense? Uh, um, can you uh, uh, get the miracle on the other side of the offense? Maybe that's what God is trying to tell us today. Maybe that's what God is trying to tell you today. There are some things that you and I need to let go so we can get the miracle that's behind the madness. So it is, so it is, so it is for us. That's why we, we praise God and we praise the Lord, but may I suggest to us, even when you think about Jesus, Jesus can be an offense unto you. Hmm. Uh, what if Jesus is your problem? 
I'm finna mess with somebody today. What, what, if, what, if, what if the Lord is the problem? Don't worry, stay with me. I ain't gonna preach no heresy today. But what if, what if Jesus is your problem right now? What do you mean? Pastor, hey, help me out because you're going to throw my mind overboard. Jesus say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. May I suggest to us the truth have a tendency to be offensive, especially if I'm in a position to where I am wrong. I can be offended by the truth. And even when I think about Jesus, Jesus has a potential uh, to be an offense unto some. Uh, throw some Bible on it when Jesus was speaking to um, those Jews and the Pharisees and he told them you are whitewashed tombs and, and, and you look good on the outside but, but, but you are full of dead things on the inside. They were offended because of the because of the truth. Sometimes the truth offends us and it causes us, not yet Lord, okay, it causes some folks to leave the church because they were offended by the truth. They left the church because uh, uh, somebody told them the truth. You asked for it, what do you think about me? Oh, you asked for that now. I mean, you know, you want me to stand up in church and just lie. You, I mean, you asked me in the church, you shouldn't ask, should ask me on the outside. I may have went a little light, but, but, but you asked me for the truth. You, you asked me, what, what do you really think about me? And we were standing right in the church, and then I told you how, I, uh, you know, I think of what I think about you. I just told you the honest truth that I think about you, and now you got offended. Okay, from the Lord's position, uh, I stand here and I do my best to come out of the word of God and preach the truth of God. And you sit there and you hear the truth, but you're going through a situation in your life. And when the truth comes to you and you hear it from right here and you don't like the truth that you heard, it becomes an offense. Yeah. Yeah. Unto you. <laughs> What are you trying to tell us? You know, I, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, 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 it's, it's not my word. Can I suggest to some of you, I didn't choose the job. The job chose me. And I had to surrender to the job. You understand what I'm trying to say? And so when I get here to preach the truth um, that, 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 that chose me, that I couldn't choose for myself, I just had to surrender. When it gets to you, how you deal with it. Is the choice, but but can I suggest to us if if we if we if we could just really make the right decision in the midst of the offense, it could get us to where God wants us. Want us to be. Look at this text. This 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 Canaanite woman. To me, she had a lot of courage because. This woman came to Jesus. Notice she was a Canaanite woman. This woman had to overcome a lot of things. I mean, she had to overcome a lot of things. She, 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 she was a woman in a situation to where um, she was moved um, by uh, an extreme desperate need. And she walked uh, up to Jesus and then some others came by. So she had to learn how to overcome some things. Can y'all walk in this text with me and look at a few things? Uh, in verse 21, that woman had to overcome race. She had to overcome race. And in verse 21, she, uh, you know, they, uh, she came out of the coast of Tyre and Sidon. She was a Canaanite woman coming out of uh, a race of people uh, who were uh, considered an accursed people. Yeah. <laughs> she was considered an accursed people. 
she come from a, 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 a background or a region where they had some kind of a vow practices going on. She had to overcome race. Uh, she had to overcome her own religion. Mm. She had to overcome racism. She had to overcome rejection. She had to overcome the reality of her situation. She had to overcome some things. <laughs> oh, when you are, uh, are, are in a situation to where an offense is being done to you, may I suggest to us you're going to have to overcome some things to get what God yeah. wants for you. She had to overcome some things. May I suggest to us when we look at this thing, we're going to have to learn to overcome some things. But when I look at this situation, uh, uh, number one, this woman found herself in a position to where she's like what we don't really like. When somebody ignore us. Came to Jesus. And she had a extreme need. Can you imagine going to somebody and you're hurting and need some help? You're in pain. In your spirit, in your mind. This woman's child was vexed with a devil. I hear you, Sister Betty, you sure right. You talking about my baby right now. You talking about the one that, that I, she gave birth to. The one that, that runs to you and call your daddy, call your mama. This woman came to Jesus and expressed how she was feeling and the Bible say Jesus. The one who was there when the world was created. The one who knows everything. The one who has all power. The one who, who, who she saw. In a sense, I believe Mark said uh, she saw him heal and raise up others. And she comes to the same Jesus and lays out to him. <sighs> My daughter is vexed, but Jesus. Y'all know how it is when, when you go to somebody, y'all know when you're really, really emotional and you go to somebody out of the depthness of your emotion. And you, you, you know, in your mind, you done thought this scenario all the way through. I mean, this thing is touching the depths of your soul and you will get some kind of answer. Oh, you need some relief. And you're pouring it out unto him and he. He ignores her. How do you feel? When you go to somebody, you're offended by them ignoring you. Man, this is, I heard one dude, this is what he said. He said, he said this dog, he said, he said, you know when somebody rejects you, it's all right because you already know how they feel about you. But now we got these phones. I got an iPhone. You know, one thing about this thing, I got this thing. You know, you know the iPhone, you know, you got it. And when you send a message out, I know some of y'all, y'all turn y'all off, but you know, when you send a message out, you know, it, 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 it tells if the person read the message that you sent out. And now, I, 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 you know, I'm going to say, you know, if somebody walks away from me, I know how they feel. But when I send a message and it reads red. Can I pick on y'all for a minute? Uh, uh, brother said you right there with your wife, and if you had an iPhone, your wife had an iPhone, and you know, one thing about it, you know y'all have days, you know y'all husband and wife, you have days where she walk off, you know. But you send a message, and it's a red. 
you know most of us, we get our phone out and you know, in a sense, we do like this. And you know, we are expecting, I mean, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm instant gratification on you, know, I'm, I'm instant. I'm, I mean, you know, it don't take that long to respond back to the text. You know why? Because I just been texting you five minutes ago, and before I can really get it up, I see the little bubbles come up. And you about to respond to the text. But when you're ignoring me, and you read the message, and the bubbles don't come up, and I'm holding my phone, oh, I get offended because you are ignoring me. Oh, that's, that's, that's how we feel sometimes because we feel that way. You are ignoring me. Yeah. Now I am offended. <laughs> oh, I know it's funny, but, 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 but that problem has, 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 has consistent all, all over us and we find ourselves feeling a certain type of way um, because uh, somebody ignored us. Can I believe that's how this woman felt? She felt like she was being ignored. And a lot of time, when you're being ignored, you get angry, you get frustrated, you get downright mad. But maybe, hold on, wait a minute. Maybe, sister, maybe say it just had to walk back in to see a client. I mean, if you could just wait a minute, if he could just walk back in. I mean, at that time where he was texting and it stopped. And, 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 and maybe he just had to put his phone in the pocket just for a minute because he ain't supposed to be on the phone no way. And, and we assume that he's ignoring you, but in actuality, he's not. But in our mind, we assume that somebody is ignoring us. But can I tell y'all something? Don't allow being ignored to cause that to be a, a, a stumbling block for you to be offended. So this woman found herself in a situation to where she came to Jesus and Jesus ignored her. So she had to deal with that. But as he was ignoring her, some of the fellas walked up. While this woman is emotional, she done laid her heart out to the savior of the world and he don't say a word, but then the saints come marching in. Lord help us in the house. And his disciples say to Jesus, send her away for she cried after us. Lord have mercy. Tread light, preacher man. Have you ever been offended by people inside the house? Sometimes people in the house, the disciples of Jesus, have a tendency to be a, an offense to somebody that's coming to Jesus for a need. And it has caused some people to possibly walk away because they did not understand that our nature is not complete or perfect. Say it another way. Sometimes we allow our emotions to get the best of us and we neglect to understand that God is not through with us yet. Come on. I'm not making an excuse. I'm just going to give you the truth of the matter. Somebody could come in and they could hear somebody and they, they get offended at what they're saying, but they don't understand God is not through with us yet. And all of us are God's children and have areas in our life that we need a touch from the master's hand. 
let me call the roll because some folks in the church uh, get positions and get titles and think that they are exempt from a touch of the master's hand. Regardless of, 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 of the big titles that you hear, I know I'll get myself in trouble, but it's all right. God call me. Uh, you know, God will take care. Regardless of how high you get, and if you get a title called bishop, prophet, apostle, pastor, preacher, teacher, deacon, usher, sister, we all have areas in our life where we need a touch from the master's hand. What are you trying to say? We are all uh, imperfect people striving to be the best that we could be. And there's areas in our life, uh, regardless of the position and the title and the longevity that you've been in the house. Show down, preacher. Uh, what are you trying to say? What if I've been here 20 years and 30 years? <laughs> Somehow, if you got the mindset, I've been here this long and I should not, I'm going to suggest to you you're one Jesus away for a should doing. <laughs> Let me say it one more time. If you've been in the house and you have the position of, I've been here a long time, and you've gotten comfortable in that position as if you got here by yourself. You're just one Jesus away from doing the same thing that somebody else. So regardless of how long you've been in the church, the church is still a spiritual hospital with sick folks who are getting better every, every day. Yeah, folks in the church are still sick and need some kind of healing. So now can I suggest to the people who want to walk away, uh, don't, 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 uh, let me take that. Uh, don't assume the nature of man to be the nature of God. <laughs> because one thing about God, God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. When you look at this text, Jesus just stood there. He didn't say a word. He didn't run away. He didn't go anywhere. He stood there in silence. He didn't say nothing. And so now, those who want to walk away, God is trying to tell you, don't go, just stay. I may be silent, but I'll speak. Silence, uh, uh, silence may not be uh, uh, an answer in your mind, but silence is an answer. I'm still God, I heard you, but you're not ready for my answer. I'm not ready for the answer yet. And so now, when you look at this thing, this woman comes to Jesus. Jesus don't say anything. The disciples come and talking about, uh, uh, she call it after us. Oh, can we just stay in our place and let God be in his place? I mean, I mean. <laughs> Can we? I mean, can, can we? And, and, and can I say this? Can I apologize for those of you who have been hurt by us? I, regardless if you are, 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 are considered a Christian brother or a Christian sister, I want to suggest to all mankind, I want to apologize for us. If we have been an offense unto you. But can I suggest to you, you got to understand this thing because this thing uh, for you and I, we can't allow the, 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 the church to run folk away because this is the place where if we really believe what we believe, this is the place that's going to help. I'm almost through. I'm almost through. I'm almost through. I'm almost through. You know, when Jesus did speak, Even though you stay, I'm sorry, can't give you the prosperity right now because it could get worse before it get better. Notice what he said in 24, and Jesus did speak, and when he finally did speak, he said, 
I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Man! Whew. So now I'm not important. So I'm not significant. So my child is not good enough for you to do something. Lord, this thing is an offense unto me. Can you see how she's seeing it? From her perspective, if she were hearing these words, it would look as if he's saying to her, you ain't important right now. It was seen that way from her perspective. But may I suggest to us, when you feel the way you feel, it may not always be how you perceive it. I mean, I mean, it, it may not. I, I believe there's somebody that, 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 that has died from an offense, had I heard it. From their mindset, if they could just hear the words, it may not be from the way, be from the perspective that you see it. Because when you look at this thing, and I know Jesus, he is perfect. He, he knows everything. He, 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 he's not trying to uh, discourage. He's not trying to harm. So there must be a different solution or a different perspective. Uh, uh, can, I, can, can I say this? When you look at this text, uh, priority and insignificance are two different things. Let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay, he in the house. Me, I grew up in a house where I played basketball, and basketball was uh, the sport that I played. And for me, the worst thing that happened to me was possibly a sprained ankle. Now, I had a brother who, who was more outgoing than me, and he, he liked rough, you know, he liked physicality and all that good stuff and he played football now for an ankle sprain my mom probably wouldn't rush me to a hospital room she probably wouldn't rush me to a hospital room but I can remember a day at a football game where my brother was on the football field thinking he was the baddest thing on the field and, 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 and one man clipped him, or a child, child clipped him one way, another clipped him another way, his leg went in the air, kneecap went one way, leg went another way. And so now, uh, they had to take him to the hospital. You understand? One had a greater priority than the next. Watch Jesus' response in this thing. I was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. What are you trying to say, Lord? It's not that you are not significant. One takes the priority over another. May I suggest to you how you look at a situation? One situation may have, uh, have priority over another. It's not that you're not important. It's not that you are not significant. It's not if, if, if Jesus was sitting there and he was, he, he was there and he was talking to this woman and, 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 and she possibly uh, could have taken an offense. Uh, 
okay, let's, 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 let's do it. <laughs> because we are in the church and somehow we think we're perfect already. And, and you, know, we, uh, you know, we say it out of our mouth, but our actions speak another way. And, you know, we find ourselves in situations to where we get so upset when somebody offends us. And, but we say we are spiritually mature. And we say uh, God has blessed us and we have grown so much so in the Lord. But let somebody look over you. Let you do some good. And somebody don't acknowledge, thank you, sister, or recognize you. How do you really feel? It has caused some folks to walk out. It has caused some folks to leave. Uh, it has caused 20-year grudges to go on at Red Oak Grove Church. It has caused some folks online to, 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 to fight and to to, to, to want to beat folks up, put other folks down, uh, um, get on uh, Facebook and, and, and have those uh, hidden agendas. Thank you, Mother Gates. Hidden agendas on, on other folks, you know, and have those type of hidden agendas. And we put those uh, uh, messages up. No, we got a hidden agenda because we feel like we are insignificant. May I suggest to you, it's all in your mind. It's all in your mind. What is my problem, Mr. Preacher Man? I fail to realize and recognize who I am. And I'm looking for you to validate me. And when you don't validate me, I feel as if I'm insignificant. I feel as if I'm not important. But may I suggest to you, you got to know for yourself that you are somebody. You got to know for yourself that you are somebody. You don't need folk trying to tell you who you are every day. It's good, don't get me wrong. You know, we need that. God put us here for one another. You know, we, we, need, we need people to tell us. When well, we've done good, don't misunderstand what I'm trying to say. But if they don't, but if you don't never hear it, God say, let me tell you who you are because I made you somebody. You are created in the image and likeness of me. That ought to be enough to make you significant. So this woman, she didn't do like most of us would do and just get mad. Mm. This woman was persistent. Can I tell you something? It's power in persistence. She didn't quit. She didn't stop. She didn't walk away from the church. She didn't start cussing Jesus out. And calling them and say, Lord, I just, 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 just let me sit down for a minute. Let, uh, you know, I got to do this. <laughs> you know, I got to just tell you what's really on my mind. I'm emotional right now. This woman took a humbled approach. And she found herself in a position to where the text say she knelt before the Lord. And she simply said, Lord, help me. Can I say to this? I know most of the time we get real emotional when, when we have been offended. Hmm. Oh. Why do you say that? I just, it just, I don't know about y'all. I have a lot of things that run across my mind when you start talking about being offended. <laughs> And it touched the core of me. And I can think about the many failures that I had because, I, you know, I allowed somebody to say something to me and I accepted what they said as truth and I responded from the truth and then I felt so bad because I got to go to the Lord and say, forgive me once again. Forgive me again, Lord. Oh, forgive me again, Lord. Help me, Lord. Oh, and so now our mind needs to be changed. We got to look at situations different. Look at the situation for what it is. Because the truth of the matter is, it can be true. What you feeling right now 
It's just a reality of what you're going through. Yeah. Yeah. So now you can't negate the truth. I'm not up here trying to tell you, act as if ain't nothing wrong. I mean, you, you don't, don't, you, you don't, don't, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, don't, 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 don't even, you know, just, just act like it ain't nothing wrong. No, the truth of the matter is, something is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. That is an offense. Yeah, yeah. If your brother wronged you, that's an offense. They wronged you. What my brother should do, he should come to me, and uh, uh, or, or I should go to him. And I'm going to go to him and tell him, you offended me. Uh, now, you know, don't brush it off. Yeah, now, this is what you did. You offended me. Yeah. It's all right. Some of us, we done walked around long enough because we're scared. I know we're non-confrontational. And I know, uh, you know, in the church, we have come under the guise that we ought to be so pious. And, and you know, we ought not let that affect us. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's a lie. Uh, and you know it's a lie. <laughs> yeah, you, you hurt me. <laughs> you hurt me. <laughs> And I just come to let you know, you know, you hurt me. And this is, uh, uh, yeah, if you want to be selfish, I know. Right now I'm going to be a little selfish because I need the release. <laughs> I need the relief. <laughs> I need to go to you to get some kind of release because it has affected me in a way that I don't like. So you offended me. And I'm coming to let you know you offended me. I'm going to come to you. And now your response may be, I ain't did nothing to you. Watch it. Here it is. Here's the choice. Ah, I told y'all it may get worse before it get better. Because when you go to him, don't have the expectation all the time that they're going to automatically say, I'm sorry. You understand what I'm trying to say? Yes, you're trying to go to reconcile with your brother or your sister. But when you don't get the response that you are expecting, can I suggest to you, you have a choice to make at that moment. What is the choice? You have a choice to be offended or not. See, 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 that's, that's, that's the challenge. No, uh, I, I, you know, no, 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 no. I can allow that uh, to cause me uh, madness or I could cause, allow that to cause it to be an avenue so I can reach my miracle. Uh, say it one more way. I could be mad at that. I could be mad at the response. This woman could have been mad at the response of Jesus when Jesus told this woman, uh, just read it a little bit more. Uh, you know, it, it, it takes from, from, from insignificance to be insulted. Jesus say, this ain't for you. Insulted is. It ain't right to take the children's bread and give it to a dog. Huh. Insulted, bad to worse. So the question is, right in that moment, what would you do? What, what would you do? But because we have done what we've been doing so long, God is trying to tell us, I'm trying to elevate you. I'm trying to take you to a higher level. I'm trying to give you something that you ain't got. I'm trying to take you to a place that you ain't never been before. You've been praying for it. You've been asking about it. The question is, will you make the choice to accept it or not? And so it is. Now this woman, told y'all I'm finna be through, this woman hears these words and she's, uh, Jesus speak and say it is not right to take uh, the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. When you study this thing, you know a lot of y'all in your mind right now saying, well, he really didn't call her a dog. But you just dig deeper off into the text and put yourself in that position to where you are listening to these words. I understand the theological ramification of the text and understand and know at that particular time, uh, the historical context is um, people who were on the outside were considered dogs. 
however you look at it, they were considered dogs. And Jesus was just speaking from the time of the culture. And so however you want to accept it in your little old mind, don't bother me. He said to the woman, it's not right to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. The Gentiles were considered dogs at that time. You have to understand uh, she was in she was insulted by what he had said. When you have been a I, I run a business and I could go to a bank and take a significantly large check off into a bank. And, 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 and two people could go in the bank and have a large check and I could walk in that check, uh, in that bank and have a large check in the bank. And the folk gonna go to the back. They gonna get the manager. They gonna, they, they gonna get the manager and they gonna, they 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 gon they they gon they gon they gon they, gonna, they uh, all right pull out your driver's license let me have your driver's license uh, okay not fine I'm smiling I'm smiling not because I'm so perfect but I'm smiling because I'm glad where God has brought me from <clears throat> give me uh, you have the driver's license Whew. you know this is the bank telling me <laughs> you know we don't really <laughs> we don't really keep this much money <laughs> in the bank at one time hold on wait a minute. <laughs> Is this the bank? <laughs> I mean, you know, I, this is. <laughs> Ain't this the place <laughs> where people come <laughs> and they give you a piece of paper <laughs> and you possibly give them another form of paper <laughs> which call currency and money? <laughs> I mean, they give you one piece and if they got a couple of stacks, you give them a couple of stacks. And, and, and so, you know, the, the ladies say, you know, you, let us know in advance when you're going to come and so we could have this ready because we don't have this type of money in the bank and and you know I'm sitting there and I'm I'm, I'm you know I'm, I'm kind of leaned over and I ain't really bothered about it the, 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 the check good and it is mine regardless of how you try to insult me I'm not bothered about what you think about me because I know who I am and regardless of what you think about me and you think that this check is so large and a little old dude like me shouldn't be getting this amount of money uh, you know if it was my bank I would have deposited but because it wasn't I told him give me all cash Give me all cash. I'm not going to allow this to insult me because I know who I am. This woman didn't take it as an insult, but she kept on going to the Lord. When she could have been mad, start cussing and fussing and walked away, she did like me. She just sit there, thought about it. She, 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 she thought about the truth. She thought about it the insult and notice her response yeah lord yeah you're right but even the dogs eat from the crumbs that fall from the master's table the woman said regardless of what you say uh, you didn't tell me uh, let, let me say this let me say this for your thought and your understanding the word dogs here most of the time is two different Greek words uh, can't pronounce both one longer than the other one means a wild cur dog the other means a pet dog the one used to have to scavenge for their food the other get the food that fall from the table of the master the dog that the Gentiles normally are referred to is the wild cur dog the dog that Jesus is referring to is a pet dog. I said all that to say, I know how we think. A dog is just a dog, though. I know. I'm with you, too. But, but even the woman looked at Jesus and say, yes, it is, Lord. What do you mean? She said, yes, Lord, that's the truth. But I got a need. 
I'm not going to allow myself, let me say it like this, to walk out this bank and allow you to keep my money. I'm going to sit right here and get the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Regardless of what you think about me, I'm not going to allow the insult to turn me away and so the woman looked at Jesus and she said yes Lord you're telling the truth but even the dogs eat of the crumbs that fall from the master's table somehow in her mind she thought deeply about what Jesus had said and said to herself he did not say no He didn't turn me away. He said, he said, he said, he said, it is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. She thought deeply. Stop. When you're offended, it's time to think. It's time to think. If I could go back and rewind time and get in a situation in Ohio, it's time to think. If I could rewind the time and think about George Floyd's situation, officer, it's time to. It's time to think. Think. Can you think? You who walked away, can you think? A commodity that we have lost in the 21st century, it seems to be the power to simply just, I mean, can we just think about it? The woman thought about it. She didn't just take the insult and walk away and start cussing and fussing and, and, and concluded it's over with, that's an end. She thought about that thing and she said, Lord, you're telling the truth. And she got deeper and she said, yet, yet, the dogs eat from the master's table. Can I suggest to you, that woman said, Lord, I am significant too. You have enough grace and mercy just for me. Can we just think, watch his response, and I'm through. She's, Jesus said and answered, one of only two times in the New Testament that are outside. A woman that had to overcome a lot of things. Receive this word. Oh, woman, great is thy faith. Great is thy faith. May I say to some of us who have stood on the side of being offended and our offense has occurred unto us, can you let it go? Can you let it go? Can you allow all of the offense to be just stepping stones or stepping blocks? To take you from the madness to the miracle. When she could have been mad, that woman pushed in power because she had a deep concern and a deep desire for the Lord. She had went everywhere I could believe. Uh, I, I just believe that this, this is just not, a, was not a one-time event that happened to her daughter. She heard about Jesus. And she was not, and she was determined. Well, we determine at a lot of things. But can we be determined not to allow other people to offend us in such a way that we turn away in madness, that we turn away and walk away and fail to receive these words, O oh woman, great is thy faith. Watch it, be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. I don't know who this word is for today, 
but it's just for you. Because I believe God has something great for you. But we can't get past it because there are some, there are some stumbling blocks in our way. I'm not denying the blocks, but can you use them as stepping stones to step over the madness and allow God to say, I was waiting on you all the time to receive what I have for you. May I suggest the miracle is always there waiting for you to get it. It's waiting on you to get it. But may I say to, the, to, say to us, the choice is yours to get just what God has for you. Everybody's standing. Let it go. There's a miracle behind the madness. If you don't mind, just, just think about that thing as we pray. That thing that has caused you pain, has caused you hurt. Only you know and God know. Stop denying it. <laughs> you hurt, you hurt. It's not to deny reality. But I want you to think about that thing. Father, we come before you now to say thank you. Thank you for your word, God. Thank you for bringing it today, God. Thank you for just being God now, God. As we've heard your word, there's somebody, if not all of us, we find ourselves in a position to where we, we have, have an offense that has occurred unto us. Forgive us, God, because we've been responding the same way. We have been accepting what somebody else has said. God, we have been responding from our own nature. We ask you now to renew a right spirit within us. Renew our mind at this moment and in this hour. Help us to understand we are significant because of you. God, help us to understand, God, that you are God. You are our creator. We are created in your image and in your likeness. And regardless of what, 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 what others have said, and God, regardless of how, how we have been wrong, help us to overcome and make the right decisions that we will mature in thee, God, knowing that they are going to come. God, we know that they are going to come. We ask you to help us now. Oh, God, when we've cried and we operated out of our emotion, God, Help us dig within our spirit and continually persist in the power of your word. Speak to your people now. Deal with that situation now. Deal with that hurt now, God. And give them that power which only comes from your spirit that they may take one step over it, God. Take one step over insult, insignificance, God. Take one step over all the pain and the problem, God. They will receive that miracle that you have for them. Touch now, God. Touch your people, God. And forgive us, God, who have been the victor and caused somebody else to be a victim. Forgive us now, God, and give us the strength to go to them and tell us so we can tell them we're sorry. Come back. It wasn't God, it was us. It was our imperfection, it wasn't you. Give us what we need to go back to tell somebody we're sorry. It was because of us, God. And if they don't come back, God, if at least it'll do is bring a brother and a sister together. Give us just what we need to go. We pray, oh God, as, as you said in your word, pray for all men. We pray for all those who are listening now. Under the sound of my voice, people are going through different things, God. Things that only you can deal with. The only thing we can say is, Lord, help. Help that situation. Help that heart. Help that family, God. All of those who are grieving right now, touch it now. Be God. We pray for this nation and the people of this nation. We pray for this government. We pray for all who are making the laws, God. We pray for the law enforcement, God. They need a touch. 
from the master's hand that you would touch them, God, that you would reform what needs to be reformed, God, that it will make this world a better place. Give us what we need to speak the right word, truth to power. Help us now. As we get ready to leave this place for never your presence, we ask you, oh God, to put a hedge of protection around us, that we get home safe, and when we get that homes are safe, we say thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, we do pray, God. We give you all glory. All praise because you're worthy, God. Loose your hands and praise him right there, right where you are, because he's a worthy God, and you deserve. God, you deserve our praise. We say thank you and we love you. We letting it go because we're going to receive this miracle that's behind the madness. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. You are this. Thank you for joining us today at Red Oak Grove, Church of the Living God. I pray on today that this encouraging message sinks into your heart and do well in your life as this week comes and goes. Join us next week for our service starting at 1130 a.m. Thank you for listening. We will see you next time.